In this video, the surgical management of a large and symptomatic prolapsed urethra in a woman with stress urinary incontinence is demonstrated. This 56-year-old postmenopausal female with long-standing stress urinary incontinence presented to this institution with a three-month history of a painful and bleeding prolapsed urethra. Urethral prolapse occurs when the mucosa protrudes beyond the meatus causing vascular congestion and edema. Differential diagnoses include urethral caruncle, malignancy of the urethra or vagina, condyloma, polyps, periurethral abscess, trauma, and in rare cases, prolapsed bladder, prolapsed urethral seal, and ectopic ureter. The exact etiology of urethral prolapse is unknown. It has a bimodal age distribution thought to be associated with the hypoestrogenic prepubertal and postmenopausal states. It has been associated with high physical activity, rapid childhood growth, obesity, trauma, valsalva, inadequate perineal attachments, and even the injection of periurethral bulking agents. Symptoms are usually minor in girls and more severe in postmenopausal women. Most present with bleeding from the friable and edematous mucosa, and it can also be associated with dyspareunia, hematuria, and lower urinary tract symptoms. First-line treatment options include topical estrogen cream, steroids, sitz baths, antibiotics, antispasmodic drugs, and or observation. Indications for surgical treatment include strangulated urethra and continued dyspareunia, pain, and bleeding. Various treatments have been described and include excision and suture reapproximation of the mucosal edges, ligation of the prolapsed urethra over a catheter with eventual tissue sloughing, cauterization, cryosurgery, bladder neck suspension, and urethral fixation with a retropubic sling. We proceed with the modification of the four-quadrant technique in the excision and repair of urethral prolapse. The patient is positioned in dorsal lithotomy. Next, a weighted vaginal speculum and stay sutures for labial retraction are placed. An 18 French metal sound is then inserted into the urethra allowing for easy placement of four holding sutures into the four quadrants of the urethra. After placement of the holding sutures, the modification we present consists of passage of two mucosal trapping sutures. They are placed before excision of each quadrant to prevent the retraction of the inner urethral mucosal edge into the bladder. The metal sound is removed and then the first trapping suture is placed in the vertical plane by entering on the dorsum of the outer base of the prolapsed urethra, passing through the tissue, and entering the inner base of the dorsal urethral mucosa. Once inside the urethra, the needle is passed into the ventrum of the inner base of the prolapsed urethra, through the tissue, and out through the outer base of the ventral aspect. The same maneuver is performed in the horizontal plane in a similar fashion. Each quadrant is then excised. With the incised inner mucosal edge held in position by the trapping sutures, the approximation of the mucosal edges with 12 simple interrupted sutures consisting of 4 ochromic is precise. Here the two trapping sutures holding the inner mucosal edge in position previously have been removed. A Foley catheter was then inserted and a tension-free vaginal suprapubic suburethral sling was subsequently placed. The patient had the catheter removed on post-operative day 3 and to date is without symptoms. 